Here's another historic page from the Illini Scrapbook. For the News Gazette, I'm Mike Pearson. From 1966 to 79, Illinois' football program had only one winning season in 14 campaigns. Illini fans were starved for a winner. New Illini Athletic Director Neil Stoner boldly proclaimed that the 80s would belong to the Illini. But who would lead the football program? Stoner announced his choice. Illinois' new coach would be Mike White, an assistant to Bill Walsh with the San Francisco 49ers. White knew there would be no quick fix without an immediate infusion of California's junior college talent, including a quarterback by the name of Dave Wilson. White's strategy was to put the ball in the air early and often. On November 8, 1980, Illinois traveled to Columbus to take on powerful Ohio State. What happened that afternoon was simply unbelievable as Wilson passed for an NCAA record 621 yards and six touchdowns. Even though the Illini lost by seven to the Buckeyes, Illini fans were now fervently behind Mike White and his flashy passing attack. Real success came in 1981 when Illinois posted a 7-4 record. The Illini went 7-4 again in 1982, this time earning a Liberty Bowl bid against Bear Bryant's Crimson Tide. But in 1983, White's Illini struck gold winning 10 games in a row and capturing the school's first Big Ten title in 20 years. Illinois was headed to Pasadena and a berth in the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Mike White's team had reached the pinnacle. I spent so much of my life in California and uh, the Rose Bowl is such a meaningful thing because it, when you are born and raised in the state of California you try to find some way to get to that Rose Bowl I and mean, I'm talking about as, a, as just as a person whether it's your family or whether one of your neighbors taking you and I've grown up with such great respect for the Rose Bowl and we've been there uh, a few times as an assistant coach uh, this is my first time as a head coach so to bring a team uh, from the Midwest to the Rose Bowl I think maybe is a fitting uh, kind of thing and it's going to mean an awful lot to me because I, I think it's going to it first of all it signifies success but uh, maybe more than anything it, it, it shows that uh, uh, success can take place uh, under uh, you know you don't always have to be in the top school and in the, in the traditional program and and I guess if you work hard enough and if, if things go your way uh, you can get there and uh, so uh, it's going to mean a lot to me and I know it means a lot because of the people see I guess, I guess the thing where I'm caught up in is that there's so many people People will be affected by this that uh, it's nice to have our small part in that and uh, that I guess that's where the pride comes from. The Illini had two more mildly successful seasons in 84 and 85 beating fifth ranked Ohio State along the way but troubled times were ahead. Yet another letter from the NCAA alleged more recruiting violations and the Mike White era at Illinois abruptly ended in January of 1988. We'll have one more scrapbook note about the 1980s Illini football program when we return following this message. So, did the 80s really belong to the Illini as Neil Stoner proclaimed? Well, they certainly did at Memorial Stadium's turnstiles. From September 25th of 1982 until September 12th of 1987, Illinois football fans flocked to the corner of 1st Street and Kirby to watch their favorites. 28 consecutive sellouts. In 1984, a record crowd of 78,297 filled every nook and cranny of space between the columns to watch Illinois beat Mizzou. For the News Gazette, this has been another historic page from the Illini Scrapbook. I'm Mike Pearson.